Is it recording? Mm -hmm. Good morning, cold, cruel world. <laughs> All right, good morning, everybody. And how you doing? We are in Proverbs 4 today. So if we can open up our Bibles, hopefully there's no dust on them. No that includes you today. in the TV world. Oh, you want a microphone? I wasn't loud enough? Sorry. Is that better? Yes. Okay. All right. Absent minded, you know, professor thing. You know. So we're in Proverbs 4. <laughs> That's after Psalms, before Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. You know. Just so you know. To give you a general area to look. All right. Don't forget, we're going to be looking for some principles because there's no promises. Not in this chapter. So, we will start with verses 1 and 2. Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. The first lecture begins with a double call. Solomon is stressing the importance of receiving the teaching. This instruction is the moral instruction introduced previously in Proverbs 1-2. To know wisdom and in instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, it adds self-control and guidance to wisdom. Hear ye, children, the affectionate address being intended to arouse attention to his readers. The instruction of a father, one who, for the reason, had the experience needed to teach others, and intended to know understanding, to make it their own because it too applies to them. They needed to realize what he was talking about, to get on the same ground so they could understand. Okay, for I give you good doctrine, teachings which Solomon had received from his father, the value of which had been proved over time and passed down, which he could therefore hand over to the younger generation with words of warm encouragement. Forsake ye not my law. Simple answer to this, don't sway or turn away from the law. It is there for your good. It was there for a reason. Verse 3 through... Seven. Verse 3 through 9. This is how I broke this one up. When I was my father's son, tender, and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, Let your heart retain my words, keep my commands, and live. Get wisdom, get understanding. There's exclamation <laughs> points here, people. Do not forget, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor. When you embrace her, she will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Okay, let me unpack this one. A lot of things in here. Solomon tenderly remembered the lessons that his father taught him. I was my father's son, beloved in the sight of my mother. The qualifications for the teacher and trainer in our text is that he received excellent teaching in his life. His father and mother fulfilled their obligations well in the teaching of him and showing affection for him. He is highly qualified as a teacher. The teaching in the testimony. The teaching given the teacher and trainer was excellent. We know five areas of what he was taught. The first one, first one, is securing of wisdom. Get wisdom, get understanding. The more we know, the more we understand. This is a summary of the counsel that the child is to seek. In all you're seeking, seek wisdom. So that's four or five. That's the first thing we need to do. Seek wisdom. Second, the steadfast for wisdom. 
Let thine heart retain my words. Forget it not. Forsake her not. Keep wisdom in your heart. Be faithful and steadfast to wisdom. Do not forsake wise conduct. Third, wisdom is the principle, the first thing. Proverbs 4, 7. Wisdom is the most important subject in the studies of learning. A major, you want to major on learning when you're in school. You may seek to major in other areas, but your first major should be wisdom. The fourth one, the support for wisdom. Exalt her, embrace her, support wisdom by honoring wisdom and by holding tenaciously to wisdom. You never want to let go of wisdom. The fifth one, the splendor from wisdom. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory. Wisdom decorates the person with great splendor. It glorifies. Of course, the world cannot see the glory, for it does not have the eyes to perceive the glory, but the splendor is there for eternity. If the world could see it right now, I guarantee there might be a few more followers of Christ. Proverbs 4.4. 4. We look back at Proverbs 4.4. 4. It is a principle. It says, if we keep my commands, we will live. So that means that is a principle. Proverbs 4.6 is also a principle. The principle from, God, from wisdom is that if we do not abandon wisdom or neglect the wisdom found in God's word, then wisdom will guard our life and watch carefully over us like a loving mother to her cherished young child. Proverbs 4, 8 has two principles. The first one is exalt her and she will promote, promote you. The second one is she will bring you honor when you embrace her. So right there, we have one, two, three, four principles. All right, verses 10 through 13. Hear my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered, and when you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction. Do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. Definition of a vantage, a place or position affording a good view of something. I threw that in there so you can understand what I'm going to say next. The advantage or vantage of the council is spoken here in these three verses. The prerequisites for a vantage. In order to enjoy the advantages of wisdom, there are several prerequisites you must fulfill. The first one is to hear wisdom, to hear, to receive my sayings. Many want the rewards of wisdom, but do not want to listen to wisdom. If you do not listen, you will not know what wisdom advocates. If you're not listening to what wisdom is saying, you're not gonna get the benefits of it. Hold wisdom, take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. You must cling tenaciously to wisdom to benefit from it. This means loyalty to wisdom and faithfulness is conducting yourself according to wisdom. That's pretty straightforward, I believe. And, um, and the next one is products of the, of the advantage. The products of wisdom, the advantage of wisdom are listed here. They are at least five-fold in number. Anybody else hear that beeping, or is that just me? Okay, just want to make sure it wasn't my head. Okay. The survival of wisdom. The years of thy life shall be many, Proverbs 4.10. This truth is repeated in Proverbs several times, as we have already seen in the previous chapters. Wisdom survives where degenerate 
and perverted sinful living will not. The sanctification and wisdom, I have led thee in right paths, Proverbs 4.11. Wisdom is always the right path. The problem is that many will not follow one who leads on the right path. The serenity for wisdom, thy steps shall not be straightened, Proverbs 4.12. The word translate straightened means distress, anxiety, frustration. But wisdom keeps one from those disturbing situations of life. Wisdom brings serenity of life. A lot of us need that. A lot of us need serenity. A lot of us would have a lot more peace in life if we were seeking wisdom, so we could see the path that we need to go on to stay away from the things that are not giving us that peace. Next. The sustenance of wisdom. She is thy life. Wisdom energizes, invigorates, and gives life. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Proverbs 4.13 You must cling fervently to wisdom to benefit from it. This means loyalty to wisdom and faithfulness in conducting yourself according to wisdom. Wisdom is not a dull and boring thing as Satan would like us to believe. We need to read God's word. God's word is full of wisdom. The Proverbs, the Psalms, there is so much wisdom in God's word. If we spend time in it, we will find it. If we apply it to our life, we will have it. We share it with others around us. We share it to our children. We receive it from those who are seasoned in years above us. They have a wealth of knowledge if we were to just listen. That is so important. Verses 14 and 15. Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. <clears throat> Wisdom advocates vigilance against evil. Wisdom will protect one from evil. The message is a warning. It forbids walking on the sinful path and gives two reasons. It's a bad path. Wicked and evil. The path evil walks is not for those who wish to honor God and walk in his wisdom. This path will put you in the company of the corrupt. It is a bad path. Wisdom does not put you in, in bad company. Wisdom puts you in good company. Wisdom keeps us on the right path, which is a much better path. Therefore, wisdom will direct you in the right path where good company and other followers of Christ will be. Do we see a theme here? Wisdom, how important it is. All right, the manner of vigilance. 415. Separation is the manner of vigilance. Separation is not popular, but wisdom advocates it, for it is effective. Avoid it. It is the summary of the separation action. The following three verses describe how evil is to be avoided, and these all come from Proverbs 415. Pass not by it. Do not go where evil is. Even out of curiosity, evil is contagious. Stay away from it. Watch where you are, your location. Some places are prone to evil conduct more than others. You know, don't go near the bar. Don't go near where the drugs are. You may be thinking you can help them, you can save them, you can send them a lifeline. It's not normally what you should be doing. You can have a drink, sorry. You know, even people that are trained to help addicts. You don't want to see them go where people are shooting up all the time. You know, they have a place where they do the training and then people come to them. You need to stay away from evil, you know. Oh, I can just walk by the alcohol store. A lot of people can. A lot of people can't. If you're one of them people, you need to stay away. That temptation. Turn away from it. Stay away. 
the next one actually is looking. Turn away. This involves looking. Don't look at evil. Turning away from evil. They mean shutting off your computer. Some people it's your TV. Some people it's your phone. And for other people, this may include your books, your magazines that you're reading. Looking and reading doesn't matter. It can all lead to evil things, thoughts, actions. It's all evil. The next one is leaving, pass away. Get out of the area. You may have come upon it by accident. Leave the evil path at once. Flee. You know, what's Timothy saying 2 2? Is it often the best policy when evil is present? You flee. Like when you, it's like when you run across a skunk going to your car or taking out the trash. What do you do? You're going this way. Ah, yep. You do an about face. You know, you get away. Flee, 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 flee. There's nothing wrong. Flee. Not being a coward, no, nothing like that. Flee, you flee from evil, run from it. Protect yourself. When evil's present, flee. Next, um, 16 through 19. Four, they do not sleep unless they have done evil, and their sleep is taken away unless they make someone fall. For they eat the bread of witness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. Okay, let me open this one up and unpack it. The motive for vigilance is what we'll call this little section. Why the vigilance about evil people? Scripture gives some good reason, some really, really good reasons for vigilance to prevent evil people from corrupting you. The character of evil, well, they sleep not except they have done mischief. They eat the bread of weakness and they drink the wine of violence. The zeal or devotion of this people Pure evil is great. First, the sleeping zeal. They sleep not, except they have done evil. They are so perverted that they can't sleep unless they've done something evil. I mean, that is really a statement to grab a hold of. They will not sleep unless they've done something evil. And I'm sure that there's some people out there. I can't even fathom it myself, because I am not in that class. I'm not boasting. I'm just saying I'm, I'm not there. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Second, supping zeal. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. They eat and drink evil. This means that they have to do evil to be nourished, and they are wholly given to doing evil. No wonder wisdom says keep away from this kind. So all they are is above evil. Unfortunately, I've seen people like this. I'm sure we all have. And we need to pray for them. The contrast of evil. But the path of the just is a shining light. It shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Get that from Proverbs 4.18. The path of evil is darkness. And the path of the right is light. The contrast of light and darkness is the contrast of good and evil. Vigilance is to avoid evil, keeps one in the light. You can't have it any more different than that, black and white, good and evil. There is the contrast. And we really need to stay with the Lord, which would be the good side, as we would say in this, this context. The curse on evil. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not what they stumble. Evil people are carelessly ignorant of what they stumble. The leaders of our nations are like this. And this is really sad and unfortunate. They fight for and allow evil to flourish. And we all see this. I'm talking about things that the Bible tells us are wrong. 
God's word tells us that this is just wrong. It's wrong. You know, remember God's word. They advocate for abortion. That's the killing of innocent lives. Homosexuality and immoral, immorality of all kinds. And it's like they just don't even realize that these things are wrong. And the nations in our world are saying it's okay. And it's a really straight path right to hell. And it's leading countries, people, down the wrong path. And we can all see it, and it happens all the time, continually, they're passing things that, uh, if they were following God's word, their laws and rules would not be passed. And we see it all the time. But we know that the Lord is coming, and we have that to look forward to. Verses 20 through my son give attention to my words incline your ear to my sayings do not let them depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh mm. all right 422 is a principle for they are life to those who find them and help to all their place. That is a principle. All right. Da, 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 da. Verses 20 and 21. The value of counsel will not be realized unless some requirements are fulfilled. At least four requirements are given. Honor. Attend to my words. If you want to experience the value of wisdom, you must honor wisdom by paying attention to it. To hear. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. If you would experience the value of wisdom, you must listen to wisdom when it speaks. Hold, let them not depart from thine eyes. Another requirement for experience the value of wisdom and loyalty to wisdom, you must be steadfast in practicing wisdom. You cannot let it depart from you. The heart, keep them in the midst of thine heart. Another requirement for experiencing the value of wisdom is loyalty to wisdom. Sound familiar? You must be steadfast in practicing wisdom. You cannot let it depart from you. To know the blessed rewards of wisdom, it must be in your heart. There must be devotion to wisdom. The reason for giving heed to instruction once again is that the words of wisdom provide life, a life of health. The health that is promised here is physical, emotional, and spiritual, the whole person. It is made possible because God's words that bring deliverance from the evils that harm and hinder life. The more we read of God's word, the closer we draw to him, the straighter our path will be. It'll help us avoid the snares of the evil one. And therefore, the less the snares that we fall into, the better we will be, the healthier we will be, the safer we will be. I hope we all can see that. Amen. Because the roads that we go down, oh, there's my light. Oh, let me go down this road. Oh, I did this. I sinned. I got hurt. Oh, let me come back to the Lord. Well, if I would have just stayed on the Lord's path, I wouldn't have gone down there. X, Y, and Z wouldn't have happened to me. But now I'm back on the straight and narrow. There is a benefit. It's not just a health benefit. It's not just psychological benefit. Them are all part of it. But we need to stay on the path that the Lord has before us. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> all right. Verse 23. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life protection of virtue keep thy heart with all diligence the word translated keep in this verse means to protect something we are, are to protect the heart from evil because out of it are issues of life and I refer to Matthew fifteen thirty-five: a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things an evil man 
out of the heart, out of the evil treasures bring forth evil things. So out of evil, out of the heart, everything comes, whether it's good or evil. Matthew fifteen nineteen. For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, murderers, adulterers, fornicators, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. The heart is vital for physical life, and also for spiritual life. Protect your interests, your spiritual devotion. Protect your heart. It is so important that we protect our heart. We need to have wisdom. We need to stay focused on God. So very important. And verses 24 through 27. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder your path at your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the left or right. Remove your foot from evil. Okay. The chapter ends with some excellent commandments for character. The parting of virtue. This is verse 24. Put away from thee the forward of perverse, evil, wicked mouth. This is not only personal departure from having a defiled tongue, but it is also a separation from those with bad mouths. Separation is very important in the living a life of wisdom. Bad mouths do not promote wisdom and being around them will influence you. As we say, what goes in will come out. Another thought is, what you hear will come out. So we need to think about that. Seriously, what goes in comes out. When we read, your, when we read our Bible, that's what's going in. And it will come out because that's what we put in it. So what you hear same thing, what you watch on TV, what you see on your computer is what is virtually going to come out of your mouth because it's going into your heart. Amen. So we need to remember these things. Yep. So Amen. daily what we're putting in is daily what's going to come out. Okay, the perception of the virtue, verses 25. Let thine eyes look right and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Next, the eyes must be focused on the proper goals. The wise person will have unswerving directness, but the fool is easily distracted. We need to stay focused. We need to stay focused on the Lord. And it continues to fall back on, read his word. It helps us. All right, the path of virtue. The path of virtue is spelled out plainly in the two texts of scripture. 26 and 27, it's really clear here. All right. If we're to think about and pray before we step out onto the path. We will have chosen a better path. Pondering and praying will help us select the right path and avoid the wrong one. Pondering our path is to ponder where we are going and what choice we have made or about to. Some paths are the fatal rabbit hole when we turn from God and his path. Let our ways be well established so that we stay on God's path. People, we don't want to roll the dice. Oh, yeah, we'll get on this path. We don't want to do anything like that. We want to be well informed. We want to pray. We want to be read up. What choices are we going to make today? Why am I going to do this? You know, is it, is it going to praise the Lord for what I'm doing? <laughs> Makes me think back. To a memory. If the Lord, well, he is. The Lord's right here. Would the Lord be happy with the choice I'm making? If we can remember that, because he's here. If we can remember that, is the Lord going to be happy with the choice I'm making? That'll help you make the right choice. Try and remember that. Amen. Okay. Uh, a straight path. Turn, to turn not to the right hand nor to the left. This means you will walk straight. There are so many temptations to turn this way and that way. The devil has so many lures that he will throw at us. He knows what will tempt us and he will throw it out there. 
something attractive that will detour us and try to get us off the straight and narrow path. But wisdom says to walk a straight and narrow path. This means that you need to be assertive as well as dedicated to stay on that path. It ain't easy, folks. The devil is going to do everything he can to throw us off. And we are still human. We still sin. We have that sinful part of us that will want to go do things. And we still need to fight that from the inside also. And we need to pray about it. It is not easy. So, next, a separated path. Remove thy foot from evil. The entire counsel may fitly be summarized in the words of the Lord. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And the Lord, God said it right there, the flesh is weak. We need to continually pray. We find it in Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. No turning left nor right. Let us continue until we hear. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Isn't this what we all want to hear? Amen. Amen. I mean, isn't it? Yeah. I know that's what I want to hear. On that final day, that final time. Yeah. Okay. okay. In closing, we all have separate paths. Now, are we sharing our paths with others? Are they intermingled with others? Head to the same direction? And just to point this out, our destination is to be close to God and Jesus. Our destination is not heaven. Our final place where we believe will be there. But we need to be close to God. But that's the point. Now our paths will have fellowship with other brothers and sisters. We need to lift them up. We need to encourage them. Fellowship is so important. And I meant to write it down. I meant to look it up. There's a verse that says we need to not forsake fellowship. It is so crucial. And I keep hearing it from people. Oh, I don't need to go to church. It doesn't matter. Yes, it does. Church is so crucial. Amen. Prayer is so important. We need to be around our brothers and sisters. We need it. We're not meant to be alone. We desperately need it. We we need to be around other believers. We need to hear the prayer needs. We need to hear the praises that God, the answer to prayer that God has done. It is it's something that we need. But we also need to be aware. We need to be on guard because evil is everywhere. And it's looking to devour whom it can. It's looking to tear us all apart. We have a virus going on right now that is tearing our country apart, it's tearing the world apart, it's killing people by the millions now. And we need to pray. We are in the end times. Who knows when this, the Lord's going to come back? But we need to pray. But we need to be walking that path. We need not turn left or right. We need to stay focused on the Lord. We need to pray. So, I just pray that we're all in and that we turn into Jesus freaks. So, that is the end of the verse. That is the end of the chapter and God is good. All the time. Amen. Well, it's Hebrews 10.25. Thank you. Hebrews 10.25. Thank you very much, brother. Give